Minnesota needs Paul Bunyan's axe. They need it bad. Okay. But Wisconsin needs to retain it. And Wisconsin also needs I think Wisconsin needs it more, man. Wisconsin also lie, needs bro. bowl eligibility. Minnesota traveling to Madison to play against Wisconsin in one of the, if not the oldest rivalry in college football, if I'm correct in that, uh, at least Division One rivalry. Because, uh, I mean, Yale... I know they played their games, whatever. They're not Division One anymore, but but Minnesota, Wisconsin is as old as it gets in terms of Division One football rivalries. So, yeah, th- this ball game is going to be awesome. Wisconsin two and a half point favorites at home. I get why they're power rating these teams pretty similarly. I think uh, Wisconsin kind of plays well in Minnesota. With Minnesota being able to uh, attack opponents through the air this season has been really kind of a game changer. The caveat with that is that Wisconsin's secondary has some really, really strong pieces there that have played against Minnesota for, you know, I guess two years now. And, uh, you know, Hallman and and Wohler, both fantastic football players. Minnesota, are they going to have to do this on the ground like they normally do in late November? This might have to be the case, right? And uh, from a defensive perspective, I would say that, you know, losing your defensive coordinator to Michigan State, who's been so good for you for a while, and, you know, having the tackling problems that you've had in the front seven and the lack of depth in the secondary, for all of that, Minnesota's defense has been awesome this year, I think. Despite all of those things, Minnesota's defense has been awesome. They have way over exceeded my expectations. I thought that defense was going to be abysmal, and it was looking like that the first couple weeks of the season when they gave up a couple explosive runs to Iowa and, you know, gave up maybe a billion yards on the ground and their offense was struggling. But Max Brosmer's found it, dude. He's slinging the pill. Daniel Jackson continues to prove why he's one of the best wide receivers in the Big Ten. On the other side, Will Pulling is, you know, also one of the better wide receivers in the Big Ten. And they've also had some pieces that have kind of come out, not out of nowhere, but some pieces on the rise. Braden Locke playing better football as the season has gone on. This is going to be a heck of a ball game against two coaches that uh, I don't know that they love each other. No, no, I, I love it. It adds to the rivalry here. It's been a weird year, I think is the right term for both of these programs. I think Minnesota obviously has some frustrating losses. You think back to North Carolina, you think back to Rutgers, you think back to obviously getting blown back blown out by Iowa, but really more so um, the Penn State loss recently. So, yeah, it's absolutely been tough. However, you've had some high ups, which have been surprising. You have a couple ranked wins. And for Wisconsin, too, you've been oh so close, maybe once or twice there. You blew a big lead to USC. You obviously lost to Oregon recently. So, yeah, it's been up and down here. I think Wisconsin needs this, though. I really do. They're recruiting well. Yes, I get that. But Luke Fickle, right? If you want to get Wisconsin fans upset, you break that bowl streak. <laughs> they do not want to see that. Not against your rival either. A team where historically Wisconsin's had their number, I think, within the last couple of decades. However, more recently, it's got a lot more tight for Minnesota there. And that's a lot of credit due to P.J. Fleck. Also on the other side there, maybe a little bit more <laughs> on the Wisconsin the former coaching staff side as well. Regardless, though. Minnesota, you said it, deserves a ton of credit. They have won in different ways this year. A lot of it has been due to the turnover margin, though, right? In wins, in wins, Minnesota is by far first in turnover margin. They are averaging 2.5 plus 2.5 in turnover margin in wins. That's how you need to win this football game on the on the road. Good thing for Minnesota. Braden Locke is good for one interception a game. <laughs> I mean, he's, he is. Yeah. Although he's been playing good football, I get that, but he's good for one a game. And for Minnesota, you can be opportunistic. You can get that one short field. And the interesting thing is you said it. Minnesota through the air has been awesome and really impressive. I think third down, third and long to me has been a spot which has historically been just impossible in a punt or a run for Minnesota. It has been actually gettable for Daniel Jackson. Elijah Spencer has come on over the middle. Jamison Gears is turning into a reliable tight end. Yeah, and even against, I think, good secondaries. Right? Illinois has done some good things this year in the Big Ten. Penn State, I thought Minnesota 
move the football well against them, even through the air. Yeah. By the way, rushing offense, Minnesota is 16th, 16th in the Big Ten. That is crazy. I would not have thought that at all going into the season. And here they are, bowl eligible, with a chance to win seven football games over their rival. With all that said, I like Minnesota plus two here. I have not been on them in a long time, right, on this show. I think they've the market has been a little bit too high on them recently, but <sighs> I like Minnesota right now. I, I think they're playing good football, even though they've got two straight losses. This is much, much different than last year. Last year, they came in with losses, bad losses to Purdue, Iowa, and, um, excuse me, Ohio State coming into this game here. And then they kind of got manhandled. This is a much different feeling and, here. In Michigan, right? They got pounded by Michigan, too. Was that yeah, two but years ago. That, that was last year, but that was like, I think that was earlier in the season. That was before their bye. But regardless, though, I. The point still stands. It, it's been it's been a rough out in here, or it was a rough November for Minnesota last year. This November, I think, has a chance to be much, but much, much better. Uh, I'm gonna be with you, CD. And uh, what as a Minnesota fan, what are the goals? Right, you gotta make a bowl game, win that bowl game, beat your rivals. You didn't beat Iowa this year, all right. It's gotta be gotta beat Wisconsin. You gotta beat Wisconsin. Get that axe back. It's scary going into Wisconsin. Like into Madison, it, it is a scary place. That place will be bumping. Okay, that I think that that I know it's not. It's been a disappointing season for Wisconsin fans in general, but they will show up for this game. They will show up. I don't know how many Minnesota fans are going to be there. I'm sure you could attest to that more than I could. But uh, Oklahoma and Georgia are the only two teams in college football with a longer Bulls active bull streak than Wisconsin. Wisconsin's been to a bowl game 23 straight years. It's really impressive. Would Minnesota fans just love it if they were the ones that wrecked that bull streak? 23 years. I know that gopher Twitter would be going pretty crazy after that. Uh, and I think they can do it. I think, like you said, they have thrown the ball in the air against good secondaries. I don't think that's going to be super scary to them. Um, Wisconsin, I do think they have one of the better secondaries in the conference, by the way. I, I don't think that's crazy to say uh, that that secondary and those pieces and the way that they've played this year and against the teams that they've played. And they made Oregon look pretty silly, right? Uh, they made Dylan Gabriel look pretty silly. I know Dylan Gabriel is good for one road stinker a year and Oregon barely escaped out of that uh, alive, but I like Minnesota in this spot. Uh, hopefully they can, you know, kind of stop the run in this spot get those turnovers, like you said, force Braden lock to make those errors that we know he's very capable of making. Yeah. I like Minnesota in this spot. I'll take him plus two and a half and I'll take him to win as well. But lastly, I will say here. So we talk about, you know, making a bowl game. However, in the APR rating, which determines, right. Um, what's, you know, it, Basically, if there are not enough bowl eligible football teams, which I don't know how it's going to shake down, we can't know until after next week, but then you'll see some five and seven teams potentially, you know, make the bowl games. It's due to their APR. Wisconsin's sitting at tied for seventh right now. However, you've got a team in Cincinnati who's at six, who's at five wins, and they're, I think, they're dogs to TCU. And yep. then short dogs. The, and then North, oh, North Carolina's six wins. So it's, that's really the only team right there in the way. Although Northwestern has how many wins? They have four wins. So they get a win against Illinois. And my, my point is, it's don't rely on the APR. Just do it yourself if you're Wisconsin. I think that's going to be the message, you know, this week for Luke Fickle and and obviously Wisconsin fans.